When you open up the positive side of the battery compartment, you'll see all of these fuses. There's four of them all together. This 250 amp fuse, most ProMasters don't have. You'll only have this fuse if you have the auxiliary switches, one and two, which are on the left hand side of the steering wheel. Auxiliary one turns on even when the vehicle is off, which in my opinion is silly. Auxiliary 2 will only turn on when the vehicle is running. I actually forgot that I had those two switches. If you have those two switches, it's a really good idea to connect your battery to battery charger to Auxiliary 2 because then it will only be on when the vehicle is running. I forgot all about that. This actually runs to the upfitter connector which is on the B pillar, which is right behind the passenger seat, right next to the sliding door. When I was planning the van, I even bought the connectors for that upfitter connection. But now, since I put in that neat little switch in that lighter socket, I think I'm gonna keep it that way for now. I'll have these for the future when I wanna go after it again and maybe make a change. Now, most people don't have this fuse. If you don't have this fuse, simply get a fuse and the corresponding bolts and make your connection. Make sure that you use the right size wire for the amount of amperage that you're gonna carry and how far you're gonna carry it back to your battery to battery charger. I'm using four gauge wire and it goes all the way to the back of the van. My battery to battery charger is a 40 amp so it's not going to pull more than 40 amps and we're going to fuse it at 50 amps one of the things that i see other builders doing that concerns me is that they're taking a wire off this positive somewhere and they're putting it under the foot driver's footstep and they're fusing it over there and in my opinion that's wrong it should be fused at the source or as close to the source as possible. And by running that wire underneath to that step, if there's a short or that wire gets worn and there's a short someplace, there's gonna be a big problem, All right? You're gonna cause sparking, arcing, possibly a fire. So I wanna fuse it directly at the source. I'm not using this upfitter connection for anything. So there's almost no load on this upfitter fuse. So I'm going to attach my positive directly to this 70 amp fuse. The amperage of this fuse is a little higher than I wanted, but that's okay. There's a solution for that also. But these bolts right here are too small for my four gauge wire and that four gauge lug. So I've decided that I'm gonna connect a six gauge wire to this and bring it around and fuse it and use that fuse block to connect to my larger gauge wire. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna come off of this 70 amp fuse with this six gauge wire and the six gauge wire is then gonna go into this fuse holder. And this fuse holder has a nice secure cover that will go on the top. That will also allow me to attach my four gauge wire directly to this fuse block. So that fuse does two things for me. One, it brings my fuse rating down to whatever I put in here, which will be a 50 or 60 amp fuse. And it also allows me to connect the four gauge wire to a six gauge wire, which is going to go to that 70 amp fuse. And for the less than one foot distance that I'm gonna go with this six gauge wire, it will easily handle the 70 amps that might go through it. 
If you're not sure about the amperage and distance for your wiring, please use Blue Sea Systems Calculator. I'll put a link to that in the description. It's really important that you have your wire size correctly. I also did a full video on wire size, which has been very popular. So I recommend you check that out. And if you have any questions, please put it in the comments. Uh, I've been teaching electronics for more than 30 years and it's uh, kind of my thing. So I don't mind answering questions. And one of the best things is if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you that too. So anyway, that's it for this part. You're about to see that installation happen. What I like about my solution is that it is fused with a 70 amp fuse directly at the battery. Then it is also fused here with a 60 amp fuse or 50 amp fuse. My positive is on this side of the battery, although I left myself enough cable that if I felt that this was a problem, I could move it to this side. But this side of the battery belongs to the negative. Hooking up the positive side is the problem. Hooking up to the negative, that's easy because conveniently there are three lugs on the negative side. So here you just have to add a washer, a nut, and of course always use at least a lock washer or use Loctite to be sure things don't become loose on you. So anyway, that's how to hook up the battery to battery charger to the battery area. Taking a look at the DC to DC charger, in the back of my van, on the driver's side, is where all my electrical is. The DC to DC charger sits right on top of the wheel wells, and there's enough wiring so I can easily access it. The thing I like about this DC to DC battery charger is that it just simply works. This is the 40 amp version. There's also a 20 and a 60 amp version. On one side is the input. These are the two wires that we connected to the battery up front. Then on the other side is the output. Again, two four gauge batteries that go to my main electrical panel. I have a video showing each part of that main electrical panel. If you're curious, please take a look for that. There are some dip switches over here to set the type of battery you're charging. For me, it's lithium, but if you have AGM in the manual, there are settings for that. And then the important part is this wire right here, which is actually two wires. One wire looks for 12 volts, and when it gets that 12 volts, it turns this on. The other one looks for 12 volts, and if it gets 12 volts, it cuts this amperage in half. And currently, that's how I've been running it. I've actually been running this at 20 amps. You might wonder why. Well, in our travels so far, our solar panels have almost always kept up with the power that we've needed. And when we drive, I can flip this on to top off our batteries. But so far, we haven't needed to charge any faster. So I'm trying to save wear and tear on the entire system. And I believe it's a little bit better to charge at a lower current if you're not in a hurry. But it'll be simple for me to go to 40 amps because if you remember that switch I put in that cigarette lighter socket, it's connected with two Wago connectors. All I have to do is pop that switch off, disconnect one wire from the Wago connector, and instantly I'm at 40 amps. Or if I wanted to, I could actually come back here and disconnect one of these because this is connected with the Wago connectors back here. And if that does not sense 12 volts, I'll instantly be at 40 amps. So, so far this has been working really well. And if you're interested in my next video, 
there'll be a video and everything that you see here step by step explaining what I've done and why I've done it please subscribe hit that notifications button and join me for the next video thank you for watching